Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to show you another method to dry aerogel. So in my previous videos I showed uh, a methanol bath and then an exchange into liquid CO2 and then CO2 into supercritical CO2 where we can remove it without uh, destroying the aerogel structure. But there's an easier way actually. Uh, instead of transferring into liquid CO2, we can make the methanol itself go supercritical. So apparently this is how the first aerogels were made. Uh, just because the process is actually simpler in a way. The problem is that it's a little more dangerous because the methanol has to be brought up to over 460 degrees F, uh, over 1200 PSI. So having a container full of methanol at those temperatures and pressures is uh, a little worrying. So uh, this is probably the most dangerous experiment that I've ever posted to YouTube, so if you want to flame me for that, uh, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm probably not going to try this again. I was kind of happy to get through this without any problems and uh, we'll probably try something different next time. So these aerogels here are the ones that I made with the supercritical CO2 method and this is an aerogel that I just made uh, today with the supercritical methanol method. And there's less shrinkage. So one of the problems I had with supercritical CO2 is that these aerogels came out with a smaller volume than when they went in. You can see the diameter here and uh, compare it to the diameter of, of, of this one that I just made. It's, this is a bigger piece even though they came out of the same mold. So I'm not really sure exactly why that is, but as you can see there's still quite a lot of cracking involved. Uh, but getting a lower density is definitely helpful. This piece has a density of about 100 milligrams per cubic centimeter, which is I think better than, quite a bit better than the previous gels that I've made. Uh, but it still could be much lower. So this piece is an even lower, this, this one's too hard to measure the, the volume of, but it's coming in at 250 milligrams for this piece. So that's probably the lowest density uh, aerogel that I've made yet. I reconfigured my pipe fittings into a sealed chamber with just a valve at the bottom and a uh, compression fitting at the top. And I just plugged up the other hole because I didn't need it. And then from that compression fitting, I made a small gauge and valve manifold and uh, added another compression fitting so that I could vent the chamber uh, remotely. So the idea is that putting a valve and a, and a gauge on the top of the chamber would be a problem because the chamber is going to be at 500 degrees F, uh, which would probably melt the valve and make it very difficult to, um, or melt the gauge and make it very difficult to control the valve. So I removed those pieces from the chamber just for um, ease of use. I mixed up a, a few different batches of aerogel, uh, same basic method uh, with Timos, um, but this time I made uh, different densities. So I started off with the typical density, the same recipe that I showed in my earlier video that's listed on aerogel.org, and then I increased the amount of methanol, or decreased the amount of Timos relative to the other uh, chemicals to make a less dense gel. Now the problem is the less dense gels uh, didn't hold their shape. So at, at the original density, the high density aerogel, I was able to use my syringe cast method and uh, formed the gel in a syringe and then uh, inverted the syringe over the container full of methanol to eject the aerogel. Um, but the lower density aerogels just cracked apart, you know, kind of as usual as I was ejecting them from the syringe. So I think in the future, if I try another batch, I will um, use like a metal container to form the aerogel and then put the whole metal container inside the drying chamber so they don't have to unmold it. Similarly to the CO2 drying method, uh, the next step is to close the chamber off and start raising the temperature. The pressure will also rise because we've got a fixed volume inside there and um, as the temperature goes up, the pressure will as well. And when I got to about 2,000 PSI, I started venting the chamber just to keep the pressure down. Um, even though we hadn't gotten to the critical point yet, I could let out some of the volume um, just to keep the, the, the total pressure lower. And I set this up so that I could vent the uh, vapor coming out of the chamber into a, a flask of water. And the water would ensure that all of the methanol vapor coming out of the chamber would be liquid instead of um, just gas floating around the room. Uh, if you have a slow leak in the chamber, there's going to be a lot of methanol vapor coming out and in a, we're indoors here, so that, that could be a problem. 
Originally, I thought quite a bit about how to heat the chamber the best way. I thought about putting it in a toaster oven, because then I could control the temperature of the air inside the, temp inside the toaster oven very accurately. But I decided against that idea because it's a very small volume inside the toaster oven. So if the chamber were leaking methanol vapor, uh, it would build up really quickly in the toaster oven and, and be an explosion hazard. So the next best thing I thought of was to use an electric heating element and just wrap it around the chamber and allow venting, to, you know, uh, airflow to occur. So if there were a slow leak, it would just vent off into the shop. Uh, but again, I didn't like the sound of that because it might be hard to identify such a leak. So I ended up just using the torch. Uh, my thinking was that if there were a slow leak, it would just ignite as it was coming out of the chamber, and I would at least be aware of it right away. If it was a big leak, uh, that could be a problem. After I reached the critical point, which is uh, 460 degrees F at around 1200 PSI for methanol, I uh, started releasing the pressure and continued to apply heat to keep the temperature above 460 and uh, allowed the pressure to come down slowly. Once the pressure is, is below the critical point, uh, about 1200, and the temperature is still above 460, uh, we can start venting the chamber more quickly because we know that there's just gas inside there. Uh, all, all of the supercritical drying has, has occurred. Here's one thing that I didn't expect. When I dumped out the contents of the chamber, uh, the aerogels that were kind of near the top looked, you know, okay. I mean, they're cracked, but at least, you know, they're, they're normal looking aerogel. But the stuff at the bottom of the chamber was kind of mixed in with this uh, ash, kind of a soot or something at the bottom. And what I had done is I had put this aluminum spacer into the bottom so that the aerogels that were sitting on the bottom of the chamber wouldn't um, fall down into the valve that's at the bottom. So I don't know what's going on here, but apparently aluminum reacts with supercritical methanol. I think, I can't even remember, but I'm pretty sure that I put a piece of window screen inside here to cover up these holes, just aluminum window screen, and it's gone. So I... <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but I'd be interested to know if you guys have some knowledge about how supercritical methanol reacts with aluminum. It, it looks like it just burned away, although I, I don't know the chemistry involved. Okay, well like I say, I think I've pretty much done with aerogel. Uh, there might be one or two other small, uh, things I'm going to try. Uh, but next up on the list is uh, vacuum frying. Someone, someone in my comments section posted a uh, a suggestion about Trader Joe's vacuum fried fruit. So this is pretty interesting. If you put food into oil and then lower the pressure and raise the temperature, you can fry it at a lower temperature than you could in atmospheric pressure. So I'm going to try that. And then of course, if that's interesting, what about high pressure frying? Uh, you could also put the food into oil, raise the temperature, and raise the pressure to prevent the water from boiling. So I'm going to be having some fun experimenting with that stuff. And I, of course, I will document and make some videos. All right. See you next time. Bye.